Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast, episode 41, Knitted Memory. I am your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai, over on Ravelry. We have a group over there. Come over and join us. There's a good discussion going on around our knit along, The Dark and Stormy by Faye Coleman. And um, you can find a blog for the show at www.knittingsamuraiplus1.com. One, dot blogspot.com. Yes, I am sure it's plus one number one because I checked that. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, the Christmas tree is gone. It was up, I think, last time we talked. It's gone. Life is returning to normal. And yeah, it's Saturday, January 12th. The sun is not really out, but the snow, it's reflecting off the snow we have in the backyard. I'd say up here in New Hampshire, we have about four inches of snow that's just left on the ground. I think the last storm that came through a couple weeks ago, but the snow's been hanging on. It's been cool enough. So, it's nice and bright outside. You can see my lovely face. <laughs> and, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. Ro has... Of course, another cold right now, so he is not the happiest of little men. He just went down for a nap, so hopefully I can get this done. But he was a super cooperative boy, and we cleaned the fridge this morning. I know, I know. He was not really interested until all the, the trays, tr levels, I don't know what you'd call them. I guess the glass trays were out, all the drawers were out, everything was out, and then he was like, let me in the fridge, which I know I should not have done, but it was hilarious, and so he stood there, and I watched around him, and he got his own washcloth, and he washed too, and oh my god, he was so cute helping me, and then I washed all the drawers down and everything, and putting them back in was the challenge, like, I got him in fine, and he was playing with the vacuum, he was playing with all kinds of other toys, once I started, there wasn't as much space in the fridge. But then once I started to put the items back in, like specifically the jar of balsamic vinaigrette, not jar, well, glass bottle, that was the most amazing thing ever. And banging that on the glass trays just seemed awesome to him. So <laughs> we spent a lot of, no thank you, no thank you. <laughs> How about this? No, give me that back, no thank you. <laughs> so. It only took us an hour and a half, but we have the cleanest fridge in the history of fridges ever. So I feel really good about that. And the reason I cleaned the fridge, since I'm chatting it up, um, I started listening to the audio podcast, Domestic CEO. It popped up as one of the favorites, uh, or one of the top ones. I don't know. I was curious, so I clicked on it. And she gives a tip every week of something you can do to make your house make you want to be in your house or something, make you happy at home, I don't know, but I thought, oh, if I could do one thing every week to keep my house in, like, tip-top shape, that'd be great, like, let's see, so I'm going to follow along and see what she says to do, uh, she said do that, and then the other thing she said to do is pack up the kids' toys that they've outgrown, which we had, were inundated with Christmas toys, but I can't bring myself to put any away, so we'll just have more toys, <laughs> we'll get there, we're just not there yet. But that's not what you came here to hear about. So let's chat it up about knitting, shall we? Look at all this messiness over here. First thing I want to show you. Oh, I don't have sock blockers. I'm a bad podcaster. You can still see how beautiful they are without sock, block sock blockers. So these are my Vanilla Bean Socks by Emily Locke. Uh, knit with the Desert Vista Dye Works Vizio base in her Schools in Session colorway. I really love the way they came out. Um, they are, like, it's beautiful. I love the slip stitch. I did the Russian bind off at the top and I made sure that it lined up with the same gold, finishing it off and the gold's on the toe. Um, I did my standard number of stitches and I bet this goes really well with my top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this shirt's going to clash with everything today. Um, I did my standard number of stitches, but the slip stitch just makes them sort of tight. And even though I followed my normal length and I you know I followed Emily's recipe but then did my own heel um they're really too small they really don't fit me they would be better suited for someone with size 10 feet so if you have skinny feet and calves these shorty socks they're not too long in the calf could be yours um <laughs> if you wear a 10 maybe a 10 and a half could get away with it but an 11 definitely can't and you're interested in these, uh, drop me a PM. The first person I get a PM for, these go in the mail to them. So, 
I might weave in the ends before they get to you. No, I definitely will. And I will soak them because I did um, wear them last night just to see, you know, where for an hour my feet were cold and it was like, no, this isn't good. So I need to soak them and weave in my ends. But if you're interested in these and they will fit you, drop me a PM and I'll get them out to you. So, vanilla bean socks off the needles. Oh, and um, this is how much Desert Vista Dye works. There's a label. School's on session. Really cool colorway. That's how much I had left. I think it's, I don't know. I don't know. I, I look at this and I see a monster for some reason. So that's what's left of that. And like I said, size 11 feet. So um, she has ample skeins. Um, when that was done, I cast on another pair of socks. So I am knitting along with the StockNet Zombies self-striping knit along for the year. So knit a pair of self-striping socks every month. This is my first month. It was already on the needles. They don't care. Um, but I thought the next pair I cast on should be with my StockNet Zombies yarn. So I started knitting with this. It's uh, basically black and neon green with some pops of purple and gray. And it's very pretty, right? It's very pretty. This, um, and this is as far as I got on the first one, not really my color. So I like it, but I, I know me, I'm not going to wear it. And I'm knitting it on US size one, so it looks really narrow. It is um, rather fitted for me. And as I was working on it, so I'm knitting on the toe and I'm just going along. Um, long story short, I have an older cousin who has a son. Stacy's 10 years older than I am. Her son, um, has now had his second heart transplant and he's 14 years old so he got his first one he was two one and a half two years old and then that heart has grown but you know he's outgrown it and he just got a second heart transplant and he's having a little bit of complications with it and he's a very much outdoorsy little guy and um very masculine and stacy's a dear heart i love her so much and even though i don't see them a lot they're in my heart and in my thoughts and so while I was knitting on these and thinking about who they could go to, I started thinking about, uh, I was actually thinking about Stacy at the time, and I thought, I'm going to knit these for Stacy, not for Patrick, not for her little boy, because he'll be okay. Everybody's thinking about Patrick and sending him their love. And I thought, as a newer mother, <clears throat> excuse me, as a newer mother, I say that, with a 16-month-old, my heart breaks knowing what she must have gone through, and now to go through it again, and watching him grow and knowing there's a time bomb and that he would need a new heart eventually. Um, so I've been knitting these as like a prayer shawl for her, putting all of, you know, my, my hope, my love, my concern into these stitches. And so I want to send them off to her as soon as I can. There's still, it, the heart came through, um, I think two days after Christmas, three days after Christmas, they got a phone call and within two hours, um, they live in Northern Maine, within two hours they were down in Boston, you know, two hours they were on the, the, air, the flight, life flight down to Boston, and by the end of the day he had the new heart, and it um, just breaks your heart to know where that came from, but um, he's doing okay, but it's going to be a long road for them, and so I'm knitting, I can't believe I'm crying so much, I'm so sorry, so I'm knitting these for Stacy with my hopes and prayers for her. So um, I knit the first one and I set it down. I don't have any tissues down here. <laughs> I set it down um, when I got to about where I think her heel is supposed to be. I need to find out what size shoe she wears and next time I talk to her I will. But in the meantime I split my cake and I started the second one. I had so I've got that much done on the second one and as you can see these green bits right here yes I do have signature needles now so these were one of my Christmas presents uh, my parents got me a few things that had to be exchanged and my dad was saying I really want to get you nice needles like I want to get you a treat what's something you would really like and I was like well I would never buy signatures because I think they're a bit too pricey uh, and I love my nitpicks but if you want to buy me signatures <laughs> So my parents got me a pair of the size 1s and a pair of the size 6s, stiletto tips and 40 inch cords because that's about what I like. And if you had, if we had spoken a week ago, I would have told you nothing because I didn't have them. But <laughs> I want to say like three or four days ago, I would have said, mm -mm, I don't like them. 
the more I'm using them, I'm warming up to them, but um, you can see this. I'm not impressed by that cord. And you can see here's my Knit Picks cord for comparison if I pull it to the same spot. <laughs> you can see how much less memory. There's some in the Knit Picks, but that's very, very kinked up. So, um, not sure about that. I have a hard time. We'll get to it when I show you my uh, Dark and Stormy, but I'm having a hard time sliding it along the needles for whatever reason. And then they seem, my knitting seems to fly <laughs> at the same time. So the um, Dark and Stormy, it feels like I'm flying along on that when I'm knitting with it now. So I, it took me a couple days to get used to it, I want to say. It seems odd, but it did. And now I'm going much faster. Oh, and I have to say, the thing about, which maybe you don't know this and maybe you do, the thing about signatures, right? They swivel or they spin, right? It's not a fixed cable. It is on the size once. So I would really, unless you're crazy about the tip, don't buy them because this swivels because they don't swivel on the size one. So I am more, I like the sixes better, but I am by no means replacing my nitpicks with this. Mm -mm. I like my interchangeable set, just, they're peachy. I love them. So, oh, and this bag I've had in my collection for a really long time and never ever used it. I think I bought it and used it once because I was like, mm, whatever. It's awkward. I can't take it out in public. It's a perfect basket type bag for sitting next to the couch while I'm knitting on a sweater. It's a great size, Della Q bag. So I really like it now. I found the purpose for it. The purpose for it is to hold my dark and stormy. <laughs> So here it is in all of its glory. I am using Cascade 220 Heathers, not Superwash, <laughs> in color 2424. And these are, as I said, US size sixes. Would you like to know the other number? Because it says it on four millimeter. So I'm at the point where you want to just uh, phone it in doing a yoke sweater. Steve was so funny. Well, he wasn't funny. I was funny. He was laughing. Um, last night I knit for four hours straight and I'm at that point in the yoke where you feel like you're not getting anywhere. It's like I knit four hours straight and I think I got an extra inch on this thing. So <laughs> the pattern's great. Absolutely love the pattern. Um, I did have a little mistake with my twists. I don't know how well that's going to pick, but it twisted one the wrong way. I ended up ripping back 20 rows in that center section to fix the twist so that they would stay the right way because I'm that anal and I'm that person. I couldn't let it go. But um, I'm just absolutely loving it. And the tip that, see this little stitch marker here? Knit N-A Kin V-A Nancy. Nancy, you gotta tell me how to say your name. <laughs> Um, the tip that she recommended was there's a little cable detail in here that you do every two rows. Well, you can easily see it. So there's a point where I have to do like 17 rows of something. And so it's like, oh, put a stitch marker in and then count the things up. So that's perfect. So that's what's going on there. Um, I am doing my increases the way I learned to do them from Cat 40. So it's not the make one right and make one left aren't exactly the same as everyone else, but it gives me this really sharp seam right there. So using the grandma and granddaughter, no, grandma and mother stitches below to lift, either on the left side or the right side. I really like the way that looks. I always use that for my toe increases as well. So that's going along. Um, what else do I have to tell you? This, I am perfectly on gauge, row and stitch gauge. That has never, ever happened in my life. Never. So I went down a needle size. The needles for the pattern are a size 7 and I went down to a 6. Um, looking at my gauge on the Harvest cardigan. Harvest Moon cardigan. I wanted a little denser fabric and so I went down one because the, the um, that's also, it's a different yarn but it's also a light worsted weight and so, you know, you get an idea of what your gauge is going to be with certain yarns the more you knit with them. And I have to say that I've spent three years being a crazy sock knitter, a year and a half being a lace knitter, and now I'm really starting to get into sweaters. So I'm just, I'm learn I've knit for a long time, going on 10 years here, crazy, religiously, well not religiously, <laughs> but you know, I've been a um, 
intense knitter for about 10 years now and I'm just now starting to get into all right let's figure out sweaters so there's a lot I'm still learning I'm sorry for wiping my nose that really bothers me when other people itch their nose on the camera and I just did it so I'm really sorry uh, <laughs> so that's that um, knit along so the knit along has been super popular I am so happy and thankful for all of you that are participating um, I think last time I clicked on the tagged projects and looked at everybody's projects there are 18 of us knitting this right now so if you would like to join you still have plenty of time the knit along ends on February 28th so you've got six weeks left cast it on let's go let's go um, I do want to give away three prizes so the first one is for Nancy, um, who is knit NA Kin VA for being the um, furthest along. Oh my God, Nancy is flying. In fact, I'm, I brought it up so I could show you how far along in her sweater she is. It's crazy talk. Um, and she's using beautiful, what is she using? Madeline Tosh Vintage versus Nancy, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to assume you don't. I'm showing her stuff off. So isn't that gorgeous? Look at the variegation in that and how far along she is. She's going to be done in no time. Nancy also knit a beat neck and has herself wearing it and her um, avatar. Makes me really, really jealous. So Nancy, this skein of Sun Valley Fibers 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon in the Chocoholic colorway is for you. Drop me a PM with your address and I'll get this in the mail for you. Um, next, I wanted to give um, a <laughs> share some love with the most talkative members of the group. So, um, Jerry and Heather have just really, I don't know, invigorated the group and moved it along. And it's been really exciting every time, every lunch, every evening after Roland goes to bed, every morning when I get up, I'm in there looking, reading, what's everybody doing? So it's been a lot of fun. Um, and I've participated in knit alongs before, but I think the fact that we're not a huge group, like when I do a Stephen West knit along, that's a massive group. You don't really get to know the people in it so much. So, um, Heather219, I want to give you <laughs> these two skeins of Knit Picks Felici in the minty colorway. One of them I did use a little of to finish mom's socks, but please take these off my hands and think of it as a consolation prize for all of the trouble that this sweater has been giving you. So Heather219, drop me a PM and I'll get that to you. And then Jerry, Pattern Whisperer, you're my hero out there. You just make me laugh. So this skein of Desert Vista Dye Works in the Vista colorway, which is 100% Superwash Merino. It's not a colorway. Vista is the yarn base. The colorway is Purple Haze. It's a gradient. Uh, that's for you. So you shoot me a PM as well. So there, we haven't had prizes in a while and it's, it's good to do them for the knit along. So, um, go join if you want to. And yeah, next, cause you know, I have to have needles full of lots and lots of things. Actually, I say that I have been almost completely monogamous on the, um, dark and starry because everyone else is flying along and I did the math and I should be a quarter done and I'm really like 12% done based on how much yarn I've used and that's not enough so I need to go faster 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 so it's a weekend I can stay up late and there's football on so that's good the Milo this is by Georgie Gagon Gagon nope that's not the right person Georgie starts with a G where's your last name Hallman, Hallam, Georgie Hallam. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Georgie. I love your pattern. You have lots of beautiful patterns. I don't mean to not know your name or be silly about it. Everybody knows the Milo. That's one of those um, viral patterns out there. So here I go. Again, I'm using, <laughs> there's something that happens every so many rows, so I'm using these stitch markers to mark. Actually, that's where the cable twist is, so I know I have to do eight rows and then do a cable twist and da 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 all the way down. Um, I think this is the second version two of the cable pattern that I'm doing. So it's for row. I am knitting with US size fives, 3.75 millimeters. This is the 3T size. It has, it's supposed to have a 22 inch chest. And I'm thinking by looking at this, um, that's not exactly what I'm getting. And I believe I went down I think the pattern calls for sixes and I went down to fives again, knowing that knitting with the cascade, I would want, I wanted a denser fabric. And it is, it's turning out really nice. Hello, tighter knitting looks better. <laughs> 10 years later, and she's just figuring it out. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, and the colorway is 1919. Heather Olive Green. So the first thing I knit with this yarn was a pair of fingerless knits for my friend Lauren. Actually, they're gauntlets. They went up to her elbows and they were for gardening. So I had like a skein and a half left. So, um, and at this point, this is how much I have left. So still quite a bit. I think I'm, I think I do double that in the body and then I do the edging again. So it's going along. It's my like, oh, knit a couple rows on this and a couple rows on that. And I can um, work on this with Roland around. I can't work on the dark and stormy. I can't knit, work on much with him around because he thinks that he's going to knit. And for the longest time, I could get away with handing him a skein of yarn and letting him run around with it. You know, I'd tie it up so he could only get a little bit and he'd pull it like a thing behind him, like his alligator behind him. But yeah, now he wants the needles, he wants the project. Like, I tried giving him the finish sock while I was working on the second. No, 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 no. So, and Steve has accepted that Roland might be a knitter. <laughs> I have to. Whatever. It's going to be what it's going to be. Oh my god, this is going to be such a long podcast. Okay, let me just say. Beatnik is in here, and it could stay in here. I haven't really touched it, so that was a quick one. Um, <laughs> this, I already showed you. That's my socks. This is Crazy Color Work Hat. Yep, Crazy Color Work Hat. I haven't touched that either. Um, really should be in a bigger project bag, so there's that. Um, and then my Harvest Moon. I don't want to forget the Harvest Moon, and I actually put a podcast earlier, but I didn't want to podcast until I had finished the edging. So yes, I'm done the edging. I have 220 yards left in this. I need pocket edges and sleeves. So uh, it's definitely going to be shorter length sleeves, which is fine. It's so fine. So here it is in all of its glory. I, I am an idiot. I didn't realize until last time I recorded and I looked at it, or maybe it was a finished picture I took of it, I didn't alternate my skeins. It's a flippin' hand-dyed yarn! What planet am I from that you don't alternate? And even, like, even if I'm being lazy and I don't want to alternate, at least alternate when I switch. So, I saw that there's a pretty clear line, you could probably see it now. I'm gonna hope that when I soak it, it doesn't really show, and if it does show, oh well because it's a glorious color. I really like this yarn. This is Yowza What a Skein by Miss Babs. Um, yeah, so I think last time I showed you the pockets, I was somewhere in the pockets. So they have been attached. There they are, they're not real deep. Oh, but they will be once I get the edging on. I need to sew up the sides of the pockets, but I did do the um, edging. So that's done. The sweater is, I'm gonna say just a little below my my um, belt on my jeans, probably three inches below, which is perfect. That's just the right length. I made it an extra inch, inch and a half in length. I know, even though I only had two skeins of yarn and I was worried about sleep length, I took the time, took the yardage and made it longer. But as you can see, my peak pocket cheat here, I don't know how much, I'm hoping that won't show. Once I get the edging on the pockets and get this tacked down and it's not flying away from me all the time, like, it would show that much right now, but the edging is two inches wide that goes on it, and that's really one of the details. That and the collar that make this sweater, so I've got to do the edging. So once the edging is done, I'm going to weigh, split in half. Nope, no noise. <laughs> weigh, split the yarn in half, and then do what I can on the sleeves. So it's coming along. I wanted to finish that and have it so it's off the needles. Oh, and I could show you my first edging. This piece of cake I knit on it this morning when I got up and was waiting for the boys to wake up. So there's some of the edging. So yay! It's so close to death I can taste it. Can you? Like 220 yards. That's a skein. I'm so torn. I'm so torn. Can you tell? Which one? Which one? This is my Erin Lane bag. It's my favorite bag. So there you go. Um if the show is not too long already, I just want to go into a couple more things. So that's it on the needles. That's sort of active. Goals. So I finished, I'm not going to do my recap of 2012. You don't, do you really care? I think I knit nine pairs of socks and nine shawls and two tops for Roland and my stash grew. I tried to not grow it, so whatever. That's sort of just a theme that's going to run through the rest of my life. <laughs> don't grow too much stash. And actually, I should look at if I grew more last year than the year before. I have that every year on January because I keep everything in 
um, route where you load everything, and I am an Excel junkie. Well, it's not my fault, it's work. And so you can download it into Excel and see your mileage, and so I do it every January, I think for the last four years I've done it. So I could see how much it's grown. But um, let's not look back, let's look forward, let's be exciting. So here are my goals for 2013. I made that little segment just because I want to do a review once a month and go through, you know, where my progress is at and sort of hold myself a little more accountable than I had last year. So first of the goals that I'm going to tackle, um, so going, pulling some of the older yarn from my stash. This was a, um, someone's grandmother passed away, one of my coworkers or her friend's friend. Anyways, I got a whole bunch of skeins of this cot. Cotton Soft Burnett yarn, and it was one of the first things that went into my stash, and it happens to be old, because it was in her stash, too. So I'm thinking I could kill two birds with one stone and knit some baby stuff for Jeff and Jeanette with this. Um, I also have a skein of Knit Picks Cannon, 100% Pima Cotton. It has a similar texture, so, you know, they're just baby colors. So we'll see. Um, this is a bag that a set of Roland's onesies came in. You know, I love Monday, I love Tuesday, I love And then there was a drawstring bag to go with it. So that's in there. So that is percolating around. I'm thinking more of a, um, a little baby bolero or something like that with this yarn, maybe a matching hat. Definitely not baby blankets with this. Too small a needle. I don't love them that much. So um, that's one thing. The other older project yarn that I've got to ferment and think about is um, the other yarn that I have that goes along with that using up some of the oldest yarn in your stash is Techie Stacy Charles New Tweed. Not that one. Um, this one. <laughs> I would say I have about 10 scans of this and this is an another yarn that I inherited different co-worker when I first started knitting um, back in early 2003-2004. So this yarn is a um, olive color and I would say it has, you have to get really close to see the flex, the tweeds of salmon and bright aqua green <laughs> that are in there. Um, and yes, Linus is sitting here. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to move him along. And yes, his eye is doing much better. We absolutely love the optometrist. Um, you know, we could have walked into that emergency vet and they said, oh, the eye has to go. It looks awful. And we would have had a $2,000 surgery. And instead he said, okay, here's a giant list of eye meds to put them on, different, you know, pills and drops and all kinds of things. And we'll check back in a week. And then we'll check back in another week and another week and another week. And it, we watched his eye heal itself, and he's still on um, one of the drops for another, I think it's like another week until he goes back again for his, probably his final follow-up visit. So, ha, ah, we have a two-eyed cat. <laughs> so, anyways, um, this is a worsted weight yarn. I have 10 skeins at 100 yards per skein, so about 800 yards. I don't know if I could take one of the patterns from the books I really want to knit and make it a short sleeve garment and go that route. Uh, probably not. Not unless it's really lacy. Um, so I have to come up with something because I want to use this up. Maybe I knit more like a sweater with this. Sweater, vest, pants, combo, set. Use it all up. So, uh, did I say eight skins? I think I have ten skins. And then I have one that's a slightly different color. So, um, that is one of my goals. And then uh, along the lines of one of my other goals, I'm sorry you missed my review of this, uh, the camera was attacking me last week, but this is Island by Jane Richmond, and I do absolutely love this hat. Um, I just spoke about my cousin Stacy, she's on my dad's side, who will easily go four or five years, 
without seeing any of them. Not particularly close family. On my mom's side, I have one cousin, LT. Everybody loves LT. She's a sweetheart. See her multiple times a year. She is, we all love LT, and LT loves Ron. <laughs> she is 15 years younger than I am. And this fall, she'll be going to college. Mm hmm in a northern climate. So she will look adorable in this hat. I have to come up, I would like to neuter a fuchsia, because it's just like her coloring, that would be great, but I don't, I wouldn't want a fuchsia hat. So maybe I'll ask her mom what color Lawrence coat is and make it match. We'll see, we'll see. But this is gonna be next on the needles as soon as I get the harvest moon off, because I'm so close, the Milo done, and then this will be my next, like, worst of the small, simple project while I trudge on through sweaters. Um, <laughs> I think that's all I've got for you this week, this time. It's not a week, it's a time. Until I see you in 10 or so days, have a great time, enjoy your knitting, do the dark and stormy, come over and lark if you want. It's just fun to see what people have to say. I've already learned some great tips and tricks, and like I said, I've been doing this for 10 years, so um, you can always learn more. And that's it, that's it.